some tiny specimens of high-tech engineering landed this spring at the Museum of Modern Art in Manhattan. A collection of tiny, fly-inspired microaerial vehicles, part of MoMA's Design in the Elastic Mind exhibit, came from Harvard University's Microrobotics Laboratory. Robert Wood, the father of the fly, was surprised to find his utilitarian robots whisked away to a museum. I was surprised in the sense that I'm uh, not even close to an artist. But I have to admit that the pictures uh, of the robotic fly are, are, are pretty cool looking. So I'm pleased that they're recognized as a design project with an artistic merit. The little robot weighs 60 milligrams with features as small as 10 micrometers, has a wingspan of 3 centimeters, and is able to generate almost twice its weight and thrust. So far, the fly has flown while connected to an external power source and tethered to two guide wires that limit the direction of its flight. But Wood thinks it won't be too long before this micro-robot is capable of independent flight. We expect to have it fly autonomously in our lab in about five years, and maybe five years after that we'll have it on the market. Wood's robotic fly uses the same mechanical components of flight that are found in a real fly. There's an airframe, or exoskeleton, actuators, or flight muscles, a transmission, or thorax, and airfoils, the wings. Using lasers, they cut minuscule slices of thin film polymers and then layered them with carbon fiber for strength. Each part of the fly's body is specially laminated to create varying degrees of stiffness. In less than a week of work, Wood can produce a new prototype this way. To make an actuator, Wood adds to that composite two layers of a piezoelectric material. When an electric field is applied to one layer, it will contract. The second layer restricts the range of that contraction, and together they cause the actuator to bend. Switching the electric field to the other layer will cause a bend in the opposite direction. Part of the challenge in recreating insect flight is figuring out how to generate the complexity of a real fly's wing motions. The transmission is key to mapping the bending actuator to specific wing movements. As the central actuator drives each wing with the largest stroke possible, passive dynamics take care of the rest of the wings flap and twist. Each flexible joint is designed to bend the right amount, and joint stops keep the wings from rotating too far. Next up is figuring out how to get a power source on board without adding too much weight. If we could shrink today's best lithium polymer batteries, we would be able to get about 5 to 10 minutes of flight. Another option is solar panels, which is how one tiny jumping robot from the University of Maryland powers itself. An autonomous fly will also need extremely small sensors to control its flight and analyze its environment. For Spectrum Online, I'm Sandra Upson.